The Passing of the Back House by James Whitcomb Riley. When Manway Cape and Company moved to smiles and tears, a weather beaten object looms through the mist of years. Behind the house and barn it stood a half a mile or more, and hurrying feet a path had made straight to its swinging door. Its architecture was a type of simple classic art, but in the tragedy of life it played a leading part, and off the passing traveler drove slow and heaved a sigh. To see the modest hired girl slip out with glances shy. We had our posy garden that the women loved so well. I loved it too, but better still I loved the stronger smell that filled the evening breezes so full of homely cheer and told the night overtaken tramp that human life was near. On lazy August afternoons it made a little bower delightful where my grandsire sat and wild away an hour. For there the summer morning its very cares entwined and berry bushes reddened in the steaming soil behind. All day fat spiders spun their web to catch the buzzing flies that flitted to and fro from the house where Ma was making pies. And once a swarm of hornets bold had built a palace there and stung my unsuspecting aunt. I must not tell you where. Then father took a flaming pole that was a happy day and he'll burn the building up. But the hornets left to stay. When summer bloom began to fade and winter to carouse, we banked the little building with a heap of hemlock boughs. But when the crust was on the snow and sullen skies were gray and sooth, the building was no place where one would wish to stay. We did our duties promptly there, one purpose swayed the mind. We tarried not nor lingered long on what we left behind. The torture of the icy seat would make a Spartan sob for needs must scrape the goose flesh with a lacerating cob that from a frost and crusted nail hung pendant by a string. My father was a frugal man and wasted not a thing. When Grandpa had to go out back and make his morning call, we bundled the dear old man with mufflers and a shawl. I knew the hole in which he sat was padded all around, and once I dared there to sit, it was all too wide I found. My loins were all too little, and I jackknifed there to stay. They had to come and get me out, or I'd have passed away. Then father say ambition was a thing boys should shun, and I must use a children's hole till childhood days were done. But still I marveled at the craft that cut those holes so true, the baby hole and the slender hole that fitted sister shoe, that dear old country landmark I've tramped around a bit, and in the lap of luxury I my lot has been shit. But ere I die, I'll eat the fruit of trees I robbed of yore, and seek the shanty where my name is carved upon the door. I wean the old familiar smell with soothe my jaded soul, and I'm now a man, but nonetheless, I'll try the children's hole.